All right, what's up, guys? You read that right. Uh, this is might be the end of the road. Here's my thing. Hear me out. I've had Zozo, my 2022 Z01 for over a year now. Yeah, just over a year. I took possession. I was okay. So I'll back up. Those of you that are new to the channel or first time watching. Also, I ordered the car January of 2022, and then I went through all every, everything with this car with my dealer chevrolet waiting for it paying for it blah blah nonetheless i took possession of it july 8th of 2022 and i've had it since then so those of you that remember my 2019 camaro ss1 le I, I had possession of that car for two years that was a little longer than i anticipated on having the car on the channel but um you know, COVID and everything, it, it threw everything off. You know, we're coming up to the crest of maxing out the LT4. So this is gonna be, uh, you know, we, we're gonna do these last round of modifications. This might, may or may not be maxing out the LT4 stock, stock blower, stock block, without even opening the engine up, this is gonna be it. So I've got, I purchased the car for just under $80,000. We've got about, I think about you know just under twenty thousand dollars cash on top of it in it so some of that not all that is horsepower not all that is uh spent wisely either <laughs> so these cars are taken off in value and i'll just add this into the stream here real quick uh let's all i did was went to ebay motors and i just looked the one with, obviously the one with the yellow wheels is scrap life scrap life garage i don't know i'm gonna have a hard time saying that but anyhow that uh if you look these cars and, and you know even though the car is wrecked 55 grand that's still a lot of money a lot uh next one up 65 75 90 000. Uh, i've been saying it the last two three years i said in 10 years this car will be a hundred thousand dollar car it might happen faster than that 1800 1801 made actually uh, I, I did a, a search if you look for 2014s they're non-existent on ebay so i actually pretty much i mean out of the 1800 i think believe i believe that 1200 of them were made in 2015 so if you have a 2014 car i'm pretty sure regardless of color low miles and it has air conditioning you got a gem there uh, that will be a super low number car and it doesn't matter so here's my thing is do we get rid of the zl1 because they're making probably 2500 a year uh, they might make more of them this year uh because of you know it's the final year and everybody wants one i did a video last year and i kind of uh i was, did a video last year and i and i broke down you know pros and cons kind of equivocated it to like a ZL1, ZL1, 1LE or a SS1 LE. Um, does have a LS7, man. LS7. You know, it'll be able, finally be able to spit flames. Uh, carbon ceramic brakes. Still get the Recaro seats, the Recaro interior. The Zeta chassis does come out to a 112 inch wheelbase, which is a little bit longer than the 6th gen. Um, it is a couple hundred pounds heavier. It, you know, that's not all that bad, though. It's not all bad. You still get the Tremec TR6060. You get a little bit of a deeper gearing, which is a 391 to one. Uh, so, you know, if you're gonna do highway pulls or whatever. I mean, obviously it's salvage title. Driving it, beating on it, modifying it, putting it through its paces. <laughs> Cause I mean, let's be honest, that's how I am. That's what I do. I might feel too guilty if I bought too nice of a, too nice of a car. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this up to you guys. You guys tell me. Do we keep going with Zozo? Do we buy the Z28? I think it would be pretty cool from one YouTuber to the next. Obviously they, their channel is way bigger than mine, but uh, I think it would be a pretty cool car to pick up. Being it's YouTube background. And now I'm not gonna sit here and, and, and advocate for this because I do not advocate for buying salvage title cars. I will say this, I'll add it back. So here's the ad. Uh, 2015, and I do believe that's uh, what Porsche 
acid green, I think, acid yellow, acid green, something like that. The first time I saw him, I about puked. And then actually the more and more I looked at, it, especially through the video, we're gonna get to it here in just a second. They're kind of growing on me. They're kind of growing on me. So uh, it is a pretty good looking car, man. I mean, the 2014, 2015 Z28, you know, you got that carbon fiber weave in the center, oof. You know, the rear end's kind of blah on these cars, but I, I do like the taillights. I, I just, I like that wicker, wicker, uh, wicker bill style spoiler. Everything about it. Um, this car is optioned with a radio and air conditioning. Now the radio, it's kind of lame. I'm not gonna lie, one speaker, it's kind of lame. But uh, the AC, that's a lifesaver. That's a game changer. So yeah, I was right, 320, 391. 3.91 to rear differential. Um, yeah, but you know, like I said, LS7, man, 427 cubic inches. This is the same motor that is in, uh, what is that, Hennessy, the Venom GT? Oh my God. You know, that car, that car is pushing like what, 14, 15, 1600 horsepower? That thing is insane. Same engine. So, man. Uh, it's, and it's only got 5,100 miles. Stick car, carbon ceramic brakes. Dude, this thing's bad to the freaking bone. I also went through, uh, looked down, saw here, and this is what piqued my interest. Obviously, they left all the credentials, scrap life, scrap life garage. Uh, so I went over, did a little uh, type of roo, and I checked out their YouTube channel, and I found the video of this car actually being uh, from pretty much wrecked to a uh, finished product. So that's pretty cool that they documented the whole thing. This is way cool. So let's let's check this out. Uh, let's run through it and yeah, we'll talk about it as we go. Obviously copywriting deal, I'll, I'm gonna stop it and yeah. Look at those carbon ceramics. Now, I know you see the damage on the rear end and we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but that, the wheels are actually kind of, they're, they're growing on me. That is a beautiful car. That is amazing. And if you ever heard of LS7 in person, there's something about it. It's got a little bit more punch to it than, uh, um, I think with the supercharged car, once you get into the RPMs, it's got the same amount of punch as the LS7, but that, you can tell it's different right from the get-go. Okay, I'll just say right here, I'm gonna stop this a lot. You can see all the the foam and, and everything uh, that bronze or brown colored uh, coating on that metal is actually EDP, which stands for Electronically Deposited Primer. That's the stuff in, in the factory when the car goes to the big mill and it goes in a big dunk. Um, we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Arguably the greatest Camaro ever produced, this extremely limited production Z28 is surely a sight to see. A little bit dusty and the quarter panel's missing, but it's got potential, okay? In the first video, we tackled the mechanical side of the repairs on this. Okay, so it looks like to me, um, it looks like to me that this car was going above 50 miles an hour uh, and somebody spun out of control and slid into something. It's either that or something hit the car going super fast. So on this Z28, after deciding which one to fix, the other Z28 became the donor rear subframe rear suspension seat and driver quarter panel so he here's what's up i paused it uh i think i missed one part here but no i didn't so we'll get into it yeah so about that quarter panel in the first video you all saw me remove it from the other z28 and well <laughs> Now keep in mind, okay, I'll, I'll just let him finish it. Maybe I should have strapped that down. Yeah, that'd probably been a solid idea. Ooh. Yeah. 
that's still usable. That's still usable. I it, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. We all know that. But in my own opinion, I would have still used this and gotten the structural rigidity from the understructure because unibody car, the skin is aesthetically what that's what you see. That's what you touch. Uh, it has zero structural integrity to the car zero so this as long as whoever is working on the car and working at a body shop the scratches and scrapes and everywhere that's scratched up it, it, you know that's whatever that can be fixed in the paint booth but as far the deformation of the face of the metal that's the only thing you're worried about you can still hammer and dolly that out get it close and work it with mud and you still use the understructure of the car that's probably the route i would have went with this but for sure, I would, I would have strapped it down to the uh, pallet. Yeah. So. It's so funny when you like, start marking spot welds, how like not, they're not like placed like evenly and they're not like in the right spot. They're like, kind of, like in and out. They're like, oh, whatever. Boom. I've been saying that for a long time. Spot welds. Even though robots do them, uh, it, it, it's weird how, you know, they're like here, there, 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 here, here, there, there. I mean, they're not like in a straight line, which you think, because when people think of, you know, the assembly line and the robotics and AI, you would think precision and perfect. And, and no, it's far from it. So it's what I've been saying. And, I, <laughs> and he's 110% right. So basically we're going to, we're going to see I'm letting it play because you're going to be able to see here um, the extent of the damage. So you can see, boom, right there. So you can see like the back of the car, and I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but you can see like in the, the back where the rear of the wheel tub, that because that's the portion that covers the tire, that's what you call it, it's the name of it, wheel tub, comes out and comes actually a little tiny bit over the tire you can see how far back in that is pushed now structural rigidity and how much of the the corner of the car is relying on that it's probably minimal but there is still some and i would have fixed that blue quarter panel that's that's what i would have done is this easier faster and more cost effective for the body man and the bill on the invoice yes is it better i don't think so but something hit this car because you can still see uh i hope my mouse is coming up but you can see like the shards of glass where this quarter glass is the rear glass the quarter glass does not have any elasticity is not they are not laminated glass it's all tempered glass so if it flexes a little bit, it's going to just shatter into a thousand pieces. So something hit this car. Uh, and what I'm guessing happened to cause it to total out is, like I said before, metal has memory. So also, if it gets bent and stays bent, it, ha it takes a memory and it actually wants to retain that shape. So anytime you damage a car get it fixed asap and the, the metal will pop it'll bounce back to its original place uh the sooner you do it the easier it is to fix whatever this car slid into i'm guessing it was going around a corner lost control spun out and it slammed into something and caused that frame to just for a couple milliseconds tweak out of uh way out of spec and it tweaked so hard that it broke the rear glass and quarter glass and then it may have came back or you typically when metal bends like that it's usually by the time it springs back you're only getting 80 90 percent of the rebound back to you know where it started from being 100 percent. so i don't know if i would have went the route that they did but when you're when you're commenting in the comment section i want you to take this into account uh, as far as us taking this on for the channel so spoke my piece that's all I gotta say about it. There she is. Yep. <laughs> so what he's doing, all he's doing is he's just cutting the skin. Uh, he's sectioning it off. And, uh, oh, oh, clicked the wrong thing there. 
He's just sectioning it off, and that's perfectly fine to do because, like I said, skin has zero uh, rigidity, zero structural integrity. So. All right. Let's yeah, boy. Find another Vincent. They're kind of going over Perfect. here. Yeah. Obviously can be done if need be. Yeah, it's its own panel here, but it also sits behind this. So. Yep. Uh, that's good. We have a little bit of a wait for... Actually, let's go back. So on the new panel, I can find this exact cutout and then cut straight through it. We have these two That's good. holes for the lower door catch. Yep. Which would be nice to line up. Same with the ones too for the actual door latch. So this is going to be the biggest thing right here, pulling this mushed up uh, in our wheelhouse. I guess... Worst case scenario, if we have to get into replacing that, we'll just be looking at a lot more time, a lot more labor, but yeah, obviously can be done if need be. Yeah, it's its own panel here, but it also sits behind this. Yes. So, yeah, that's good. Yep. We have a little bit of a wait for the new. So, yeah, even uh, what I'm thinking they did was I'm thinking, you know, rather than thinking longevity or whatever, uh, it was just a more cost effective way to get in and out and get the car done. So, you show them here if you fast forward. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link. If you guys can watch this. You watch them pulling on it. Man. And he's taking that hammer and hitting that hammer. One, to shot peen the metal to get it to... Uh, it shocks the metal and allows it... It's not quite like a kneeling. Maybe a little bit in the in the moment that it's happening, but it causes that metal to, uh, it shocks it and it allows to stretch and kind of relax. So that's, that's all that is. Yep. So that was actually a really good, uh, you'll be able to see, see how far, how rippled that lip is. When you get to tugging and stretching, anytime a metal dents, it stretches. So, uh, it's also something to keep in mind. You know, all that time you're going to have to sit there and cause to re-shrink, either cut cut that metal out or get it to shrink and work that arch back in to that radius around the tire. So, it's the factory. Anytime you order a quarter panel, any anytime you order a body part with that satin sheen on it, it's called EDP. Electronically deposited primer. That's the good stuff. Do everything you can to retain that stuff. So what we're doing? He's getting everything lined up here. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna catch it. And I'm gonna freeze it here in just a second. Okay. Does anybody see? Like, man, I really hope my mouse is showing up. Right by the quarter glass window, the sail panel on the quarter panel. <laughs> As far as the repair goes, here's here's my the biggest problem I have. There is no weld through primer. And I've explained this time and time again on this channel that when you weld, it doesn't matter if he's using, you know, Stargon gas or whatever whatever he's using the shield as weld, that's fine. You know, it doesn't matter if he's using 030 wire, you know, mild steel. It doesn't matter. The thing is, is once you cover all that up and stack that sheet well because i mean you can see like on the quarter glass where he's drilled the spot welds out there's no corrosion protection between those pieces of metal now <laughs> so keep this in mind when i'm spending fifty five thousand dollars so uh this is my big 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 snag on this car there's no weld through primer being used uh, so I am seriously concerned about the corrosion protection. Could I cut it back out and redo it? Yes, but why would you? So, um, yeah, let's, let's keep going. We'll talk about it some more. Here's my big cat. So I will say this, it does look like the man can spread some mud. So um, everything looks amazing, tip top shape, and I will vouch for that uh, repair as far as that goes. 
the painting. Uh, okay, so, dude, get a suit. You wrapped everything in plastic. You did everything so great. Get a suit, dude. Uh, I'm. I would. Whoever looks at this car, I really want to check to see if there's any dirt in the paint. Does look like he's using a solid jet. I can't tell if it's a three thousand or four thousand, but. I mean, those are really nice. They do spray and lay a finish down that is pretty much like factory orange peel. So um, that would be, yeah, not bad. Just the weld through primer. That's, that's the thing I got the biggest problem with. Got good overlap. Yep. There it is. Yeah. All cleaned mm -hmm. up. Front lip repaired. Man, I haven't seen this car look like this the entire time that we have. Okay. All right. That's it. Stupid awesome car. We could beat on this car, guys. We could beat on this car. So comment below. Let me know. Uh, I'll leave a link to the video. Go watch it. It's really cool. It's interesting. I think he could have gotten into it a little cheaper. It's just the market was hot at the moment when he bought it. And I understand the, the situation he's going through because I did the same thing with my car. Should we get rid of the ZL1 and take this car on? I think it would be cool. I think it would be really cool to at least experience a Gen 5 on the channel. Let's talk about it in the comment section. You know what to do. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Take care. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you.